Welcome to the Munchies Virtual Cook-Off. I'm Faraday, the Culinary Director at Munchies, and I'll be judging today's competition. We asked you all to send in a video of yourselves cooking a Munchies recipe, and we've narrowed it down to four contestants. We're gonna be judging today based on plating, creativity, technique, and personality. Let's meet the contestants. Hi, my name is Amy Ha, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. Hi, I'm JP. I'm from Costa Rica. Hi, my name is Stevie B. I'm a lawyer by day and oftentimes at night. My name is Sean Ashmead. I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here with my quarantine buddy, Marvel. Today's recipe is carne asada fries. What the contestants will be doing are making their own homemade french fries, marinating and grilling a steak, and making a homemade pico de gallo and guacamole. Let's see how they do. Step one, you gotta marinate the meat. So we're going to use the flat of our palm for our fist. Smash it. It's always good to just smash the garlic. It feels very empowering to do so. Remember to always keep your claw, as my old teacher used to say, a bear claw. I've never heard that called a bear claw, but I love that. This reminds me of donuts, though. Sean's got great knife skills. He's fast slicing, slicing and dicing and doing all that stuff. Gloving up. I like that she's gloving up. You don't wanna touch your eyes after cutting one. It'll burn. Let's all be safe here. Let's use a glove. Many people have hurt themselves. <laughs> These are called limon mandarina, which is like a, an ugly baby between uh, a lime and a mandarin. Limon mandarina. That's the most beautiful piece of citrus I've ever seen it. Amy zests the orange like I do. I put my um, microplane against my chest and zest it towards me like that. If you don't have the citrus press that a lot of people have, this is another way you could do it. Just take your fork, stab the center of your citrus, squeeze, and then turn your fork. And that's a way to get a lot of those juices out. That's a great technique to do the, old, the fork in it. Um, I feel like whenever I, I have a citrus press, whenever I use it, it end up, ends up squirting everywhere. Um, so maybe I'll start doing that. Add in. Make sure that's all ground up nicely. Flank steak is pretty tough meat until it's marinated, and once it is, it is fantastically juicy. And you can see the, the sort of striation marks in here, which I think is really important to see. And what I like to do is take a fork and just poke some holes in it. I like that he's poking the holes into the meat. All those juices and everything is just gonna get into the meat and really penetrate it. If you ask Mayhem Loren, I think that the fork is the unsung hero of kitchen work. I am going to use skirt steak instead of flank steak. That's all I could find in the store. I won't lie to you, skirt steak is actually my favorite kind of meat. So yeah, get that skirt, you know? And then sort of smush it around. That's a cooking term, smush. Smush is a cooking term. I think it's actually in the LaRue's Gastronomique um, book. So look it up. JP's doing the smush technique as well. And Sean, everyone's smushing. Look at them all just smushing away. Looks like all the meat's marinating and it's time to make the french fries. Steven cutting his potato with on his dirty cutting board with his dirty knife and he's getting parsley everywhere is kind of making me freak out a little bit. JP has not potatoes. What's he got going on down there? Instead of potatoes, we're going to be using yuca or cassava. Cassava. It's a, a root used in Latin American cuisine. I think the cassava is actually a really good swap for this. They actually crisp up really nicely. We want to have them soaked in cold water for about an hour to like get all the starches out. So um, I actually already have a bowl prepared. Look at Amy with the swap. What's the motto here? Slice, soak, dry, and fry. Slice, soak, dry, and fry. Steven is just making up words and having mottos. I'm going to pan roast my potatoes because I don't eat fried food. Sean acts like he's better than all of us not eating fried food. You, know, you don't always have to do exactly what a recipe says. You can always make some sort of adjustment to help your dietary restrictions. I like that he says that to, you can, you can definitely always adjust recipes for your dietary restrictions. Juca's a little tougher than potato. That's why we're gonna blanch it before we try them. Blanching the cassava, okay. As a little extra thing that I'm gonna do, this is a taco seasoning that I just made about a month ago. It's just a little chili lime seasoning, coriander, salt, and a tiny bit of cumin. Nice, I like that he's using his own little seasoning on that. We are doing a double fry today. I believe that a double fry fry is uh, super crispy, and I love crispy fries. So Amy's doing a double fry. I wish that somebody would just do my fry technique. My fry technique is very easy. After you soak them, you put them into cold oil and let it just come up to temperature. I think it's one of the easiest ways as a home cook to make french fries. 
nice and crispy. Look how they're brown very they brown are. Looking. Nice and crunchy. And they're gonna get more crunchy and stay warm in the oven. And the smell is just like that classic amusement park smell. Classic amusement park smell. I do love it. So Jeff, what is your favorite part of this video so far? Spending time with you. That's good to hear. Oh my God, Jeff and Amy, this is so funny. <laughs> That's so sweet. You're in quarantine together. Don't you see each other enough? Nice amount of salt. Salt them while they're hot. Oh, those cassava fries look amazing. You're screaming like a lobster when you put it in. That's a myth. Lobsters do not scream. <laughs> Sean, screaming like a lobster. So let's stop right here. Look at all four of these. Which ones would you eat? Stevens, because they look the crispiest, right? My technique. Come on, guys. Well, now that everybody made their own version of their french fries, let's see how they do in the pico and the guac. I like the cherry tomatoes for two reasons. One, that's all I had at home. And the second is they're a little bit sweeter. Mm. Steven's knife, you can tell, is not sharp enough. His tomatoes are like squirting and like buckling under the blade. Now look, JP is just slicing right through. That's what your knife should do with a tomato. Pico gallo literally means um, rooster's peak. The rooster's peak. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why this, this has that name, but that's what it's called. Look at, Steven is not doing a bear claw at all. He's about to chop his fingers right off. You wanna tuck your fingers and you wanna go almost to the rear end. And then I've been taught to palm your hand and then slice all like almost halfway through. And then we start cutting. Her knife also sounds incredibly dull. It's like making that noise. One technique that I saw that I started to like is you go ahead and slice it straight down to make kind of half moons. And then you just cut the rainbow. Cut the rainbow. It's like instead of tasting the rainbow, you're gonna cut the rainbow. I think that's a really approachable technique for a home cook is slicing the rainbow. Um, Cause sometimes people are scared to kind of go in and, and do those slices. I think that's a good one. Good job, Sean. My wife, Lessa, a little shout out to her. She likes a little bit of spice. So that's a nice thing, so. Yeah, Steven, you show your wife a little spice. Spice things up, make her happy, that's right. All right, so we have our ingredients. We're going to use half of it in our guacamole and half of it in our pico de gallo. All right, Amy's making her pico de gallo. Look at Sean, just tossing away. He's like going for it down there. And then for something a little different, I'm gonna add a little bit of scallion to this for another little pop of scallion. onion. Scallion, nice, a pop of onion, I like that. Hold it in the palm of your hand, be careful. Get the pit and then use your board to slide the pit off. I love this technique that JP's doing for the avocado. I I actually do that sometimes on the side of like a trash can or something. I've never done it on the cutting board. That's great. This is our avocado. Not the best avocado, but it still works. <laughs> Amy, her face, she's just like, right? wah, wah. I mean, that is a sad avocado, but it's better to use it than to throw it away. Sort of snap that out. Steven, I don't know how you well, cut into your avocados, but it looks like you just like tore the into them with your teeth. Nice, Sean slicing away. He got his fork technique with his limes. I will just say that old JP with the Bon Appetit sign in the background. <laughs> this is Munchies, not Bon Appetit. Wrong channel, buddy. Hey, chill. You want an ice cube? Marvel, get Marvel an ice cube. I don't know why my dog likes ice cubes. Dogs do love ice cubes. I found it out after I dropped a bunch of ice cubes. Oh my God, Steven's thing is overflowing. We got the brown guacamole from Amy, but I'm sure it's gonna taste great. All right, they're on to grilling the meat now. I don't have beef today. I have pork in the fridge, so we're using what we got. After I made this marinade last night, I went ahead and marinated my meat for about four hours. Damn, that looks tender as fuck. She's pulling that pork out of the slow cooker and it looks really tender, it looks delicious. Not at all what the recipe is. It's carne asada, not carnitas, but um, I mean, I guess you do with what you have. Look at the outdoor grill, that is a grill. I only have a little lever outside, so I'm a bit jealous of your grill set up there, Steven. So you see how the flank steak is more in the middle of the grill? And I have all three controls on the highest heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that sear and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the heat down in the middle but not on the ends. And what that is is that's called indirect cooking. And so the indirect heat from the outside is coming and cooking the middle but it's not burning the outside. Good explanation of grilling. 
there you go. Indirect heat, direct grilling, all that stuff. Carne asada means barbecue meat, but obviously we're not gonna barbecue anything indoors. So we'll just use a, a heavy cast iron skillet. Ooh, listen to that sizzle right on the, uh, even, see, even if you have like a camping stove like that, you get it hot, you get that sizzle. It's okay if you can't cook it outside and grill it outside or barbecue it outside. Just make sure your pan is hot like that. How am I gonna cook this carnitas, you ask? I am going to use the fat from the crock pot. At least if Amy's gonna be doing carnitas, she's cooking it properly. You use the pork fat to fry up the meat and get it nice and crispy, so. Sorry, I'm a nerd. I'm going to use a thermometer. Sean, you are a nerd. Use no the thermometer. Let's see where we're at. We're almost there. It's just about rare right now. I'm just gonna let it keep going. Sean, squeeze some extra lemon on top. JP's looks good. I like to rest it with foil. It sort of cooks it longer, it keeps it hot. Important to rest your meat. Getting crispy. Look at that, look at that crust. She is getting good crust on it. If you're not following the recipe, at least you're doing it properly, the technique that you are doing, so good job. Okay, so our steak has been resting for a few minutes. We're now we're gonna cut into it. So you need to let meat rest after it's in grilling because once you cut into it right away, it's just gonna bleed everywhere. Yes, you will be bloody, but really it's gonna end up being more tender meat is what you're looking for. Because when it seizes up like that, it's tight, then it rests and it calms down. The meat isn't as hot, it cools, calm, collected. It's gonna taste better. Okay, now it's time to put all the pieces together and see how they do with plating it. We're gonna take a half a cup of cheese, which is co cotilla cheese. We're gonna sprinkle that on top. Another thing I like to add is also more cilantro. Amy, that avocado is brown. 100% use your brown avocados and stuff. Don't let them go to waste. You're in a competition. It doesn't look that good. Just FYI, you are being judged on plating, so. Also for my cheese, I couldn't really find anything else other than queso fresco, which is a nice um, skim milk cheese. Queso fresco is a great, Substitution. That looks good. That looks like a bowl fit for me. Ooh, JP's looks really nice too. It's nice and bright, colorful. Here in, in Costa Rica, we have something called Turrialba. So Turrialba is like a, a town here. And so they make this fresh cheese. Nice, that cheese looks like butter. It looks delicious. It looks nice, guys. All right, the final judgment, here we go. Okay, Steven's plating. Um, put it into a casserole dish. Don't love that. I would have done a platter myself. Um, but the fries look really good. The meat looks tender. I don't love the onion. It's a little bit chunky for me. Um, same with the tomato, but I'm sure it'll taste great. Looks good. I like the little bowl she put it into. Um, the fries do look good. I think that the cilantro stems, I mean, the cilantro is kind of taking over everything right now and it's too stemmy for me. I would have done more leaf. The cassava fries look awesome. I'm sure they'll taste great. The meat looks great. Um, the cheese, I feel like I it's a fine substitution, but I would have maybe grated it instead of cutting it into cubes. Ooh, Sean's looks amazing. That plating looks great. He's got one little sprig of cilantro. I maybe would have put a little bit more cilantro. The cheese looks great. The meat looks cooked perfectly. The tomatoes all look nice and even. This is gonna eat really well. It looks good. We're gonna have a, just a touch of tequila. Nothing over the top. Tequila to go with it. Sicily. Excellent. Ready for it? Well, that's a big bite, Amy. Damn. This is really good. She likes it. It sounds crunchy. JP good. likes it too. Very good. Nice. Those taste so good together. Are you gonna share it with Marvel, Sean, or what? The like poofiness and fluffiness of that potato with the fatty. Could be crispier if you fried it. <laughs> this is awesome. That was really fun. Everybody did so many different changes and adaptations, um, and it was really cool to see it all kind of come together and it worked. Um, this is a very close competition, but there's definitely gotta be one winner and I'm gonna call them right now. Hi, Sean, how are you? You are the winner of the cooking competition for carne asada fries. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. You win all of our cookbooks. I'm gonna send you a bag full of swag and stuff. Um, when all of this dies down, you can come to New York, hang out with me in the test kitchen sometime. Oh Same. my God, I would love that. Yes. Uh, I, I've been dreaming to see the kitchen as long as I've been watching, so. <laughs> well, thank you so much, congratulations. I am disappointed that you didn't fry your french fries, but they came out good baked. 
I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be healthy. I'm hey, trying. you're setting a good example for all of us. I need to do the same, but um, they looked amazing. It looked awesome. You, you, so you did fantastic. So congrats. Oh my God, thank you so much. It means so much. I really needed this. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for participating. Um, cook along with us at home, hashtag cook munchies and show us what you're getting into.